Hi, I'm Simone Porter. And I'm Blake Pouliot. And we are here on the Violin Channel Vanguard stage. We are going to be joined by our pianist, Shin Yi Huang, for a program that is The Sounds of California. Uh, we are both from LA, and we comprise this program to be ineffable and sprawling just like our city. So we're going to take you all around pieces that have touched our lives personally, composers and relationships to us individually. And uh, hopefully you can enjoy our little taste of California that we've brought for you. So the Much Ado About Nothing Suite by Eric Korngold is a really funny little piece, uh, not played very often. Korngold has an amazing voice and amazing ability uh, to kind of evoke this old Hollywood sound. Um, the suite's in four movements, but I'm just going to be playing the third and fourth. Uh, and they're mostly about the uh, one of the couples having their loving, just affectionate talk in the garden. And the fourth movement is the masquerade. It's all about trickery and mischief and all these kind of like deception. Uh, a charming little piece, super beautiful, really gets to show uh, the violin's beauty and really uh, shows off Korngold's amazing Hollywood tactics as well. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
The next piece I'll be performing is the Three Preludes by George Gershwin, which are actually arranged by Yasha Heifetz, and uh, very special to me because uh, his studio, which you know he used in Beverly Hills, was reconstructed at my school that I attended uh, in Los Angeles, so I actually got to have my lessons every single week in Yasha Heifetz's actual studio. So uh, I have a big connection to Heifetz and these pieces, a uh, fabulous piece of music. George Gershwin, of course, is an outstanding composer, and Heifetz did a great job of arranging this piece for the violin. Total captures all of uh, the virtuosity uh, that Yasha Heifetz had in his lifetime, but with all the beauty and jazzy flavor of uh, Gershwin's writing. So I'm super excited to uh, be playing with my fabulous pianist, Shinny Huang, and uh, I hope you enjoy the Gershwin Heifetz Preludes. Thank you. 
I get to perform a piece that I have loved and played almost half of my life, uh, Nagoon by Ernest Bloch. I'll be playing with Shinny Huang, and this piece is sort of an improvisatory spiritual reckoning. I think it contends with the process of mourning. Uh, Bloch wrote it in memory um, and devoted to the loss of his mother, and throughout the piece, it builds, it sort of unspools these deep, deep feelings into rhapsodic melodies and then grows into a really frenzied ecstasy. But the piece is always moving towards acceptance and transcendence. Every single time I play it, it feels like a really deep journey and offers an opportunity for transformation. Um, 
I'm grateful every single time I get to perform it and perform it with Shinny. So I hope that you will join me on this journey with Ernest Block Nagoon today.
Sabina by Andrew Norman was inspired by the experience of watching a sunrise in an ancient church in Rome from the fifth century. And the church is Santa Sabina, and it's a very, very gorgeous space. It's special because it has arched windows all around, which are made not of glass, but of translucent stone, selenite. Uh, Nan, uh, Andrew Norman has written about how moving this experience was, how he loved watching the light grow and change and was transfixed by its warmth and its luminescence, but also the complexity and delicacy of its effects. Um, I love this piece because it's incredibly tactile and because sound gets to be sort of an architect. He teases textures and sonorities out of the violin that are very unexpected and that sculpt this just glittering structure. Um, it's extremely, extremely exciting to play and I'm very excited to delve into Sabina by Andrew Norman. Thank you. 
So we're very excited that we now get to come together at the end of this program to present to you the Miklos Roja Sonata for Two Violins, uh, an incredible piece of music. Uh, I came across this uh, different little recording uh, just, you know, in the middle of lockdown, not a lot to do, uh, thought we'd dabble around, and I found this and was completely mesmerized by it. I thought it was so cool, um, and so listened to the entirety of it, and when this opportunity came up uh, for Simone and I to perform together, I thought, what better piece for us to come together than this amazing piece of music, total Hungarian influence, and this really, really special piece of music isn't played very often, but a total thrill to actually collaborate with and adventure and explore together. Yeah, this was a great piece in its own right, but it really fit with what we wanted to explore about the music of Los Angeles, which is um, very, very multifaceted. And this is just one element that is a classic. Uh, Rosa was famous for being a film composer. I think the most famous thing he ever did was uh, the music for Ben-Hur. Yeah. But um, we loved how spunky this piece was, the sort of like Bartokian edge of it, yeah, honestly. Exactly. Um, we noticed that it would be something that we would love to groove to. And we loved how it was so cinematic and dramatic, but also subverted expectations sort of at every turn. Uh, this is our first time getting to really play together, so we wanted to do something that felt like home, that would pose a challenge, and that would just be sort of a very interesting investigative journey for both of us to collaborate on. Yeah, it's been a 10-year buildup of us knowing each other. Uh, we've been kind of through the thick and thin of it, from college to traveling around the world, and so it's super exciting for us to now come together and perform not only a really cool piece of music, um, but then get to share the stage and extremely yeah share yeah. it together. Can't so we wait. hope you enjoy.
Um, Blake and I met almost a decade ago. We're about to have our 10 year anniversary. And we met at the Colburn School in Los Angeles where we were both attending and studying with Robert Lipset. And uh, I like to say the second we met, we actually sat down and talked to each other for three hours straight and we honestly just haven't started, stopped yakking to each other ever since. Yeah, we basically just, it was my first day that I moved to California from Canada and uh, I ran into Simone in the basement of our school. <laughs> in the practice um, rooms. Yeah, yeah. classic <laughs> practice rooms where we spent many years of our lives. And we just connected in a way that was really fun. And from that moment on, um, next year it'll be 10 years. And we have just continued hanging out. We've traveled all over the world together, um, separately, like as, you know, with our school, just as friends, just taking trips together. Um, and this is our first real kind of professional engagement together. So it's taken a decade, but... It's super exciting to be sharing the stage together. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. 